the second topic is securities market okay now we have already understood what is securities securities are any financial instrument which has a market for trading okay now let's try and understand different type of participants which is there in this market okay so so different type of participants in this market now we know there is at top of all we have a regulator okay the regulator as we said for securities market was securities exchange board of india sebi okay now the motive of this market is to channelize resource from savers to deployers but predominantly being into capital market segment it is to give growth on your investments on your on your savings on your capitals so being a market which you have understood could be of uh, okay taking risk because unless until you take risk your returns does not grow okay so sebi was incorporated with the main objective of taking care of uh, investors interest okay so sebi is at the helm of the entire uh, affair as far as securities is concerned and they govern the entire process the entire mechanism even the uh, stock exchanges they do have a right to all the stock exchanges being a self regulatory organizations would have their own bylaws but then they can overrule them okay so sebi is the regulator and then we have issuers of capitals which normally are corporates okay so they are issuer of securities they give shares in return they take money okay investor gives money and that money is used by the company to give you added returns okay and there are investors in securities which are investors okay any individual okay and there is hell lot of intermediaries okay stock broker okay merchant banker lead manager your relationship manager your private equity manager your banker your okay or uh, anyone anyone who is into the business of uh, helping with your investments and in return charge for a commission for his brokerage would be an intermediary but they are also governed by sebi so sebi is predominantly incorporated with the motive of taking care of investors interests and to protect that they would have rules regulations that a company should be following to be able to extract money from investors as well as the participants or the intermediaries who were there in the system were okay their procedural issues their uh, operational issues their registrations their licensing licensing everything would be a part of a uh, uh, sebi's domain okay now when there is an interaction uh with an investor okay as an issuer directly you get in touch with the investor without any intermediary being into the picture okay that is what we say is private placement okay so private placement is the biggest buzzword where a company prefer uh, doing so predominantly because the cost of raising capital is minimized with no intermediaries into the picture there's no uh, requirement to be paying uh, commissions brokerages extra cost of mobilizing those capital so as a company you can directly come up with proposals for individuals institutions okay and you can raise your debt and equity whichever way you want your capital to be done and when you do so uh, without any intermediaries involvement we call them private placements okay which is again a part of a uh, new issue if a company is doing for the first time okay but then private placement is when there is no role of intermediary has been involved and as i said is the biggest buzzword uh, last few years if it has been observed predominantly 70 75% of um, capital mobilized in private market in in primary market is done through private placements so any company would prefer that but then there would be some restrictions okay the biggest restriction that sebi has put into uh, private placement is that the moment you need more than 50 individual headcounts to mobilize funds as a company okay so 
then it doesn't remain private. It has to be then public. And then you have to go through the regula regulations that is governing uh, the new issue market. Okay, so unless and until uh, if, if, you, if you are able to channelize your resource okay, by less than 50 individuals, then it could be a private placement. So there, is, there are some challenges, although it's a preferred route, but then the biggest challenge is that with lesser number of individuals, uh, there's always a chance that uh, the fund providers, the capital providers could collude, could form a cartel, could know each other and they could intervene in your day to day operation. So as a company, you have some uh, in intervention in your daily operations. Okay, That might be a reason why a company would not go for private placements. But then private placements are the most preferred options. Okay, So when an issuer subsequently, as an issuer, you take help of some intermediary or lead managers and through them you okay, mobilize funds through investors, then that becomes a part of your public issue, primary market, okay, where uh, the company needs funds, they take lead managers, merchant bankers, banker to an issue, okay, registrar to an issue, different, different intermediaries are involved, underwriter to an issue and through them you go and channelize your money through general public. So that is where you uh, talk of primary market. Okay, again under the preview of SEBI. Okay, and already issued securities as we said is traded in uh, secondary market. So secondary market is just the involvement of investors with intermediaries. There is no involvement of company. So if you are buying and selling shares through secondary market not a single PASA of this goes to the company. Okay, it's entirely your profit or your loss. The company was only involved in primary issue, primary market, where they got their funds, and then it's subsequently your money, your profit, your loss. If you want to liquidate, if you want to exit your investments, then you can go and do it in a secondary market, finding some other buyer. Okay. And for that, we need some intermediaries involved. As a broker, the, you need a broker from, from which you can uh, do a trading. You need a depository. You need a uh, banker. Okay, But then there is no involvement of company. So that's why the moment I see a company getting involved with secondary market, SEBI has a very strict guideline that it's uh, insider trading and it's, it's totally prohibited. Okay, So the participants, uh, all participants, under securities market is governed by SEBI. Okay, and uh, to broadly understand that the issuers of capital, predominantly corporate bodies or governments or uh, okay, uh, state bodies, the intermediaries in the form of uh, lead managers, banker to an issue, merchant bankers, investment bankers, okay, stock brokers, underwriters, okay, and then we have investors. So predominantly SEBI is there with the motive of taking care of investors interest okay and with that objective all other rules are there prevailing in the system to govern your issuer the corporates or the intermediaries okay in the system but then all mobilization that is happening from an individual or an institution to the issuer of a capital okay is all governed by SEBI so SEBI is the regulator at the helm of the affair and then it governs the participants if there is a direct involvement uh, by the issuer and the investor, then we call them private placements. If it's a company with intermediary and the investors involved, then it's a primary market. Okay, And if it's only the intermediary and the investors, company is out of the picture, then we call them secondary markets. Okay, So uh, continuing further, the basic functions of a security market, as we said, is a linkage between investments and savings. Okay, Again, predominantly uh, the savings which has a motive of growing or giving you a regular income. Not just uh, equities, there are debts being traded, so that's also securities. So debt instrument has uh, would give you a regular income, where an equity would give you a capital appreciation okay? and uh, dividends as another cash inflows. But then the function of a secondary or securities market is again linkage between savings and investments. Uh, it's a marketplace for purchase and sell of securities. Okay, because I said uh, 
only if there is a market for buying and selling of securities, it's a security. Otherwise, it becomes a non-security. So any financial instrument which has a market for trading is a security. So securities market is a place where securities can be bought and sold. Okay. Uh, liquidity, that means uh, any investment by nature should be liquid. Okay. Otherwise, uh, it has a limited uh, uh, scope. Okay. The takers of those instruments would be very, very limited. Liquidity by, by liquidity, we mean that whenever change of ownership is happening, Okay, that should be minimum loss of capital. Okay, so if you have a company share and you want your money, you want to exit for fraud of the investment, you go to the market to sell. So anything worth 100, while selling you are able to sell it off at 99, you lose 1 rupee as capital. So the lesser loss of capital, the more liquid your investment is. Similarly, if you go to buy something 100 worth of some equity and you end up giving 101, then your loss of capital is 1. Okay, so the minimum loss of capital is where you say your investment is more liquid. So any securities by nature should be a liquid security. That means whenever a person is wanting to exit, there should be minimum loss of capital. Okay, they can exit it through a marketplace where it can be bought and sold. So if you're wanting to buy something, I should be paying less over and above what it, should, what it is ideally worth for. And if I want to sell something, then I should be getting okay uh, the most as to what idle price would be so if it's 100 rupees worth of shares i want to sell then i should get 100 if not 100 then maybe as less of loss as possible maybe 99.50 or something okay so all investments in securities should be a secu all, all securities in, in instruments should be liquid instruments and uh, since it's channelized through investors the issuers are taking money and giving you ownership in the form of equity or okay which has a market for trading. So invariably the entire mechanism is with the objective of sharing the increased wealth. So companies capitalization increases, the company's value increases, the company's wealth increases in proportion of your ownership, your uh, value also increases of your investments. Okay. And uh, to help you diversify okay, as an investor uh, by taking different different type of investments okay creating a portfolio which is able to be diversified you minimize your risk okay so predominantly securities what are securities securities are any financial instrument which has a market for trading okay and we need to understand different participants predominantly the role of sebi okay into this entire uh, mechanism and then what is the function of okay so from this topic if in case uh, we see uh, the most frequent type of doubt that probably pops up or the type of question that normally has been asked. Again, a concept question for four odd marks okay, to explain. But then you'll get questions uh, like uh, distinguish between securities and non-securities okay so clearly you have to bring out okay that uh, how uh, securities are different from non-securities non-securities are any financial instrument which does not have a market for trading but still it has a potential to make your capital grow or in the form of appreciation or uh, giving you regular income so it's still a part of capital market but they're not a securities because it's not able to be traded in the market. So we have to bring that aspect okay, while discussing this question. And uh, the second type of question that normally is, uh, is, is do pop up when somebody is talking about this topic or generally been asked frequently is uh, discuss the functions of a securities market okay so you have to bring out uh, all those things that we have been discussing okay you have to bring out the aspect of being liquid okay being able to diversify risk being able to channelize resources so that savings are links to investment okay and uh, 
a place where you can buy and sell shares the more efficient so those all functions has to be brought up in discussion so these are the two prominent points that comes up in this topic a small topic in the sense that uh, broadly as a concept it could probably again fall under overview of financial system only that there is a securities market there is a non securities market as a part of capital market okay where there are some instruments which does not have a market for trading so it could not classify as a securities but then still it serves a purpose of what securities does being a part of capital market that is to grow your capital so it has to be discussed under capital market okay so these two points under this chapter would probably be the takeaway that you should take from this discussion Thank you.